Hello, I'm Linda Seif from The Layered Onion. Thank you for joining us. We will be listening to our amazing creators talk about their art and mental health. 48 million artists all over the world share this lived experience. The Layered Onion was formed to create a supportive community, allowing the creators to focus on their art, bringing their work from the shadows to receive the recognition and opportunities they deserve. Each podcast will feature an artist who talks about their creations and mental wellness. Art is healing. We hope these discussions will inspire you to appreciate the stories behind the creations and more importantly, inspire your inner creator. Together, we can tackle the stigma surrounding mental health. So hello, Ruth. How are you? Good. How are you, Linda? I'm very, very well. Thank you. So Ruth, maybe you could introduce yourself to everyone and, you know, talk a little bit more about you and then about your art. Sure. Uh, Thanks, Linda. And thanks for having me on the Layered Onion podcast. Um, So um, I am a mixed media artist by night. Uh, During the day, um, you know, my my, my day job, uh, I'm a project manager um, and I have two young boys. Um, I've always been... um, you know, inspired by art. Uh, I remember when I was little, like my mom would find scraps of paper everywhere all over my room. And, um, you know, I I didn't have very many toys uh, because my parents were Cambodian refugees. So uh, they had um, immigrated uh, to Chicago. And so like we would um, get things like little golden books from the church, um, but I didn't really have very many toys. So I would create my own toys, you know, I would use paper and um and that kind of grew as I got older um and that my first experiences was with photography in high school and um I did graduate um with a bachelor's of fine arts at the University of Illinois in Champaign uh with medals so that was like jewelry and craft work um but I really kind of found my job and um uh, like web technology because because those kind of like you know art and mm-hmm. technology kind of go hand in hand so um and uh, so, so i did art off and on um i really um had gotten into it uh because i thought maybe i could get a career as like a museum creator i had worked on uh, for the museum on campus um but it just wasn't meant to be i had like a thick of uh, a book with like six rejection letters so i was like mm-hmm. okay let, let me go the route of my minor um and then i start to gravitate back to art when um my children were born and and I always did, like, I did do some volunteering, um, uh, teaching, like, art classes to kind of, like, underserved uh, youth um, in Chicago. Um, But when my kids were born, um, it was kind of a challenging time. um, And um, things that were going on with my husband as he was dealing with um, my ex-husband who was dealing with alcoholism at the time and depression and anxiety and and I was diagnosed with um, complex PTSD um, and so a lot of like trauma was being triggered um, and I actually ended up being um, inpatient a few times um, in like 2019, 2020 um, and when I was there, it kind of brought me back to art. Um, just the the act of kind of like coloring, and and that's uh, what a lot of my work um, focuses on now is that re- uh, repetitive, um, you know, figure eight or circles to make colors. And um, I use Prismacolors a lot in my work. Um, you'll find a lot of text and words in my work. Um, I also like to use Sharpie uh, for, for that same reason that I use uh, Prismacolor uh, pencils, that same stroke of like, you can't really, you know, rush Sharpie because you'll get all the streaks. So it's very repetitive stroke making to get a solid form. And for me, that's very grounding um, and it's very meditative um, and, and it kind of brings me back to my flow. So that's what I enjoy doing. And a lot of my work focuses on mental health and kind of um, 
bringing more awareness to it and um you know it speaks a lot to self-compassion and and so that's uh you know the bulk of what i do so uh, and thank you for bringing up a word um a lot of your work has a, a few words or a word um and so is it when you're being mindful that's a word that comes to the forefront and that's how the piece becomes or do you think about the word mm -hmm. and then think about how the piece is going to be um so, so oftentimes it's actually how the piece becomes so it's either from like a photograph i've taken uh, because i love being out in nature i love taking the boys on hikes um and a lot of my work includes like the words are made up of my own photographs um mm -hmm. and what i do is i when i'm in that moment i'll have an idea that usually it's really in my brain it's all there um but sometimes i don't have the right piece yet like for example um the current piece in my head uh, is the word um rest because there's this picture that i took of clouds and i wanted pictures to kind of you know amplify and highlight the word rest like like um and so i haven't found the right pictures yet to put in with the words but um that's kind of how it starts so once i find the right picture uh, then the the whole piece um comes to fruition so multimedia is really an interesting format because it can be anything right and um so i, I really I didn't realize that those words were actually made up of your photographs. I'm looking at the one piece called Moments. Mm -hmm. And um, that, and the background is very ombre on that piece. And is that done with uh, prism pencils you're talking about? Yeah, Prismacolor pencils. Prisma. Yeah, so the back, yeah, yeah. So it's just layering of multiple colors to get that effect. I, I know I, I think uh, people that have seen my work have said, oh, did you, did you, you know, like shade that in or, or do like um, uh, rubbing? I'm like, no, I, I actually do all the little circles. All Which the is really, <laughs> wow, that takes a long time. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but I love it, that kind of ombre approach that it ends up you know and I just did not realize those are your photographs that's really cool um, because I wasn't sure if those were coming from magazines or if they were coming from other places um, that's 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 neat um, well you had a piece in the shallot and it's I'm gonna try to put it up here <laughs> And our theme for this shallot was really about um, thinking, you know, really about next, right? And so maybe you could tell us, there looks like there's almost like a candle. Is that what, and then coming from the candle is almost like a mask. Is that what, mm -hmm. it, maybe you could talk about this sure. piece a little bit. Yeah, so, so what you see there is a candle and then kind of the flame is extinguished and then you see a butterfly. Um, oh, and it's a butterfly, yeah. okay. Somehow so I almost thought it looked like a mask, that you yeah. were taking off a mask. Yeah, okay. and it's it's great that it can be up for interpretation. Uh, but really, mm -hmm. that piece had developed from um, my um, ex husband had passed away earlier this year in February. Uh, the boy's dad, and um, so that's what that piece is called in um, memoriam. And the song, there's a piece from the song um, uh, from Lincoln Park, um, who um, Chester and Bennington was the vocals for uh, th that group. Um, and it was called, um, uh, I think it was uh, One One More Light. And mm -hmm. um, I think he wrote it or, or had um, sang it in tribute to Chris Cornell, who had, um, you know, passed away uh, or died by suicide, just like Chester had the following year. Um, but that song kind of played in my head. And when the boy's um, dad had died, um, like this image this image and the song kind of came up to me because um, really to me, it was, uh, you, you know, he died young. He, he was only um, 40, but it was because of his um, abuse with alcohol and dependency on it and his liver had given out. So in a way it was kind of like 
it was a matter of time, I think, before it inevitably happened. Um, and I know, um, so that kind of flame and the butterfly, but the, what the butterfly represents is kind of that reincarnation, right? Because butterflies have a really short uh, lifespan. Um, and it's thought that, you know, when the butterfly um, reincarnates, um it's similar to like him because uh, he used to be a butterfly keeper so every time um i see a butterfly i tell the kids oh that must be your dad and and so kind of still looking over you and and they kind of resonate with that every time they see um, specifically an eastern um uh, eastern yellow uh, uh tiger uh I think Swallowtail, it, um, they, they think of him because that was his favorite butterfly. So. so the candle has music in it. And is that mm. the song that you're talking yep. about? Yeah, okay. so, so sh should have stayed. Yep. And that's okay. a, a song, uh, a lyric from uh, the song One More Light. So okay. it, mm -hmm, the, the, the song itself uh, kind of focuses on like, you know, like, we do kind of care about these lights um, that flicker and fade away. And, you know, they still kind of keep uh, uh, a lot of impact. And we have a lot of memories of, of those who have passed. Well, and the background, of course, once again, are each little circles that you must have done. And I, I don't know, do you think there's a million there? There's just a <laughs> Uh, yeah. There's so many that and it looks very textured. It almost looks like um, like you can touch it almost like wallpaper. Do you know what I mean? That it has mm -hmm. a very big texture. And so maybe tell me during that process, was that really part of you processing, um, you know, this death? Uh, it's, you know, the, the parent of one of your children. It's that's. It's a big deal, you know. Right. Yeah. Ex absolutely. Um. Uh. The process of um just kind of repeating the circles and layering the colors that really kind of gets me to be, you know, at the time like I may not have wanted to feel that grief, mm -hmm. but it just helped me kind of stay present and be grounded with the grief. And then the whole piece itself became really healing um, just to see it come from, you know, the initial laying of colors to kind of uh, me rearranging the papers and um, um, adding the candle and the butterfly element. And um, it, it definitely um, was a, a really good tool uh, for me to kind of be okay with with what happened. So, as you think of its tie back to next, is it really this idea as that candle is out, but the butterfly lives on, and that's what's next? You know, maybe right. Yeah, tie like, it kinda, for me a little. Kind of like um, as far as next, like there's the thought that. Um, you know, we continue to bring on our personalities, our histories, our memories through others, right? So it's not like that flame is extinguished forever, but it it'll be carried on by next generations. There there's someone that knew this person, there's someone that had a memory and experiences with this person, and, and those memories then kind of grow and flourish into something new right a, a new butterfly will, will come along and, and have that experience yeah I, I love the the whole idea of a butterfly and the metamorphosis from you know a uh caterpillar to being in in its um cocoon to coming out and that cycle is just really a calming cycle to think about the whole you know rebirth process and and uh the transitions that we go through through life right yep yep exactly Re rebirth is is the word that that i would use to kind of uh, you know identify with that piece mm -hmm. so this was it was super exciting that you were in the shallot and um it's it's an amazing piece but maybe talk a little bit about how did your 
boys feel about that piece? Did did they find some, you know, yeah. comfort in it? Yeah, no, they they did. They they really enjoyed it because um anything with butterflies that they um you, you know have that attachment to, um you know being outside and enjoying walks, but then also kind of like knowing that their dad loved butterflies. Um, I think like just shortly after we bought a insect books and they immediately turn to the butterflies mm -hmm. and recognize which ones were which so they have an interest in um those types of um insects and um um i i feel like um it, it was kind of a way for them to cope with um you know something that's may not be as explained you know there, there's really no explanation to like uh, what you tell a child of, well, you, you know, that the he's um, up in heaven, he's still looking down on you and with all of our others, um, loved ones that have passed. And, and so the, the butterfly almost becomes a totem of like safety and comfort that like, regardless if, you know, um, if even I'm older and, and I'm not here for them, that I'll still be there with them in, in some way. So, mm hmm so maybe talk a little bit about how your art has been influenced by, um, you know, your heritage, because there's certainly, I, I think there is more in, in Buddhism and others. I don't, I don't know what your background is, but, you know, the whole idea of reincarnation and thinking about sort of, you know, those ideas are, are more from, I would say you see in some of the Eastern Asian mm -hmm. countries, um, how, how has that influenced your art? Well, I think like um, the idea of like impermanence um, mm. and patience, you'll see a lot of that in my art, um, especially with um, the pieces that uh, specifically focus on nature. Um, I, I uh, didn't put two and two together as far as kind of my my own uh, spiritual beliefs or in religions because uh, I am Buddhist but I'm not as devout but I do believe like I, I believe in reincarnation I believe in um, kind of um, y you know the the idea that there's uh, a higher being um, and, and our ancestors looking over us. So in some of the pieces of the latest piece that I worked on was just a four by four square. It's um, I have it taped oh, up here, cool. but it's just called um, shed. Oh, then that's rest. beautiful. So it's this idea that like, you, you know, we look as fall as like, oh, very, um, there's a bit of sadness because of the decay and uh -huh. going into winter it's it's kind of something that we all kind of really don't look forward to um but for me it's kind of like this reinterpretation of like okay well when those leaves falls these amazing buds pop up and and those buds are um to protect um the tree from uh the blooms from the winter so it's like you said it's that cycle of rebirth and impermanence and constantly changing and evolving but we don't lose ourselves right that tree was however big and now it's um you know, uh, grown to have more branches, more blooms, more trees, and how will it bloom next year? So, um, yeah, the, definitely it has a lot of influence in, in my work, um, nature as a whole, um, and, and that thought of rebirth. Yeah. And I have to say, for me personally, nature is where I feel the most grounded. And um, so, I love that you pull that in so intimately into your pieces. I think sometimes um, I write. So, and if I, if I, you know, paint or whatever, it's for myself. And I am probably really judgy about, <laughs> about how it, it doesn't feel like it's really capturing what I'm looking for. But um, I think, what I love about your pieces is it's really about the process. Mm -hmm. And maybe you could talk a bit about how art has really, you know, been a part of your healing journey. Yeah. So, so for me, um, uh, having a complex PTSD, um, it's, 
really difficult to not react to certain stimuli, to certain triggers, and um, but I've learned to pause. My artwork has taught me to slow down, and so whenever I do start to feel hyper vigilant, or if I do have a physical re response to a situation, um, I, I take that step back. Right, um, I, I journal at night. I listen to music. Um, I, I do um, art. Um, I, I take, even if it's just for ten minutes, right? Just the ten minutes helps uh, kind of take me away from kind of the difficulties that I might have had that day. And and I, I joke about it, but like my own trauma. Um, kind of comes up uh, around the kids, you know, and it's like, I, I can't run away from that. They're my kids, you know, and, yeah. and, but it's understanding kind of separating that, okay, in this moment, the way that I feel isn't necessarily true, right? It's it might be because of um, a trauma that I've experienced in the past. So um, by knowing to take deep breaths, slow down, try to find, um, techniques that'll help me get grounded um that's um is always helpful and, and art plays a huge process in that because not only does it allow me to kind of like um kind of you know transpire my thoughts elsewhere um but it also kind of brings me back to the present moment and and the process it's like it's not about it, the product it's it, it does really help because I, I know that there's no cure for complex ptsd but um but there are like tools and techniques that can help me um you know through my my healing journey mm -hmm. well I want to go back to the piece you held up. Is that once again just? Is there any yeah. of your photographs in that, or is that all so, the? Maybe explain a little bit more what sure. you did. Yeah. So for this one, uh, I had a picture. So I, I took pictures of uh, the maple leaves, and, and so uh -huh. these maple leaves were actually kind of curled and already starting to turn color. Um, and what I loved about it was just how. Um, like um organic um and gnarly kind of the folds and the curls were and uh i did that in prismacolor and then i came back and did uh the background in sharpie um and kind of those blue specks are kind of what you would think of like when you're looking up at the trees and the sun oh, is shining through, yeah, through so it's kind of the speckles um and yeah. then the word um really this piece came from shed then rest so it's like a kind of the idea of like the leaves may look like um, the, the tree is shedding the leaves, but um, it's also resting. Like, like I think we feel like beauty is lost, right? Because all the leaves are gone, but actually there's a lot of beauty in the buds. That they're just taking a break, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So, well, if you think back and think about what you were doing with, you know, your, like you said, you used art and different things when you were a kid because it was really kind of how you played. If you think back to that experience and what, what would you tell your younger self about um, that experience up to, you know, thinking about how you do your art today? I would probably tell myself to not throw anything away. <laughs> yeah. When I was younger, everything was crumpled because I mm. just didn't like it. Um, and to realize that it's it's about the process and, and just to keep making, right? And because the more I continue to practice, the more I connect with the work that I make, the more that others um, learn. And, and I realize, realize that a lot of my pieces educate. Um, I, I to know um, that like they would be such a great learning and teaching tool um, so um, that's what I, I, I would tell my, my younger self is to not be so critical don't be you know be, be a bit more self-compassionate it, it took me a long time to, to get to a place of um, self-appreciation and self-compassion um, not in the way that it's toxic you know sometimes we talk about self-love and it's more so about having that awareness of, okay, I'm being way too hard on myself. Like, you know, there's no reason I need to crumple up this, this piece of work, right? It, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Um, so, yeah. 
perfectionism is really an enemy, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. um, I don't know where that gets kind of tucked in our head, but it's really <laughs> tucked there. Yeah, human nature. Yeah, human nature. But we're all imperfect and we're all growing and we're all in this journey together. Um, if, if we just kind of give ourselves that opportunity and find that kindness within ourselves. You know, I always find it fascinating. So, like, I'm a klutz. It took me till my 30s to be willing to admit it. But, you know, I've just, I have no hand eye coordination, et cetera. So, I have no need to be have perfectionism in sport because I stink, right? But if there's something you're you're kind of passionate about or a little bit, you know, good at, then the perfection really seems to overwhelm you because now all of a sudden you have expectations. Where on the things you just well, I'm just gonna say stink at, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and you wonder why you can't bring some of that over Uh, yeah and and i think as an artist i I think sometimes we limit ourselves because when we get to a space of defining like what is what is your job what is your character as an artist we, we feel like we have to be successful by selling a lot of things or you know having a claim or or things like that but but i think i've realized that just um getting to a space of being okay with what you're putting out and not being too critical and still having that same type of playful behavior that you did when you were younger. Um, it's, it's like really so empowering and inspiring and like, that's the magic of art. Right. And I feel like if we get to a place of like, my work isn't good enough. Um, no one's going to buy this. So, like when we get to that place, we, we really need to take a step back to, to why we got into art in the first place. I, uh, you know, here, here, um, it's really about art. And that's, of course, what the Layered Onion really tries to do is about the intersection of art and healing and really creating a community of all of us who have had experiences um, and challenges in the mental or emotional health areas and really how we can, you know, bind together and, and both be a community and use art in a healing manner for sure. Yeah, most definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess my final question for you, uh, unless you have anything else you want to add, is really asking, are you teaching your um, boys how to do art and how they're you know, are you doing some of that work with them like you did with other children? Yeah, so um, with the boys, that they actually are very, you know, it's almost like an innate skill. And, and mm. I, I, I wonder if it's because um, uh, they they have my genes, but um, both of my sons, they're they're both super creative they both love to draw um my one son my youngest he loves to write his own books and he'll draw his own characters and and i'm just happy i was like okay you want me to staple 10 pages together so you can make a book okay i'll i'll do that you know Mm -hmm. and um it's just so rewarding to see them and they love to do these drawing challenges and and um, my husband their stepdad now also participates in it and we're just like so surprised by like what they put together and and you don't think like um Mm -hmm. when they do drawing challenges like oh like you know what made them think to draw that and and it's really inspiring to see but but i take the kids everywhere i'm also part of the romeoville art society so i've kind of lugged them around and shipped them around and so that they've been around other artists and it's almost kind of like okay we're, we're going to an art society meeting or okay we're going to go to the trunk or treat and decorate the art society um trunk or mom's giving a workshop and, and it's so great to have them see the positive effects of art and also be um part of that community so so i hope that like they'll you know, kind of turn to art in the same playful manner that they do now when they get older. Well, actually, you made me think of something I noticed a lot of from the the art society that there's a lot of face cutouts where people, you or the kids are putting 
um, their face through. Is that really meant to try to, well, I guess, what's the purpose of thought behind that? Uh, oh, so what it was was because our, uh, last year I dressed up as Bob Ross. So the, the thought was <laughs> to have like an art theme. And so okay. we made these cutouts and I just used acrylic paint and some glue in the dark paint because mm -hmm. it was outside. And the cutouts were just for photo opportunities, but it was so amazing. Linda, this year, so many people said, oh, it's, you know, it's Van Gogh's piece or, oh, that's the scream. And so just oh. to see young kids kind of know the historical background behind these fun cutouts. And it's uh -huh. just a way to kind of engage them and, and kind of connect them with like current day and, and those greats that we learned about when we were younger. Well, it looked like it was super fun. <laughs> it, it was, yeah. It's, I loved it. This was our second year participating in it, and, and I would love to that we continue doing it annually. Yeah, well, that's great. Well, is there anything else you would like to tell folks? Um, sure. So, so, yeah, you can find me on Instagram at our Hong art um otherwise i'm also at or our hong dot art uh or you can go to my website at our hong art.com to learn more about me and kind of see what upcoming events i have and yeah i um, would encourage folks to go buy the layered onion i, I really love the last uh, uh volume of the shallot uh, that the layered onion produced and it's so great to see various mediums of art and writing and creatives coming together with, through that lived experience um, of mental health. So, yeah, thank yeah, you so much. For anybody who the Jam GD um, volunteered and did the redesign, um, and it's absolutely lovely. Um, I think it's really does a great job of putting the artist as forefront as the art, um, like back on your page, you know, you have about you, a picture of you and then your piece. And I love the fact that that it's really about both the artist and the art, mm -hmm. you know. You. So I think they did a great job. Um, and thank you so much for them for doing that <laughs> in kind for us. That was mm -hmm. awesome. So. Well, I hope that we talk soon and that we'll see another piece of yours in the shallot and um thank you so much for joining us thank you linda i really appreciate it take care take care bye thank you for joining us today it is an honor to talk with these amazing creators you can see and read the artist's work in the shallot our journal of mental health art and literature or on our website thelayeredonion.com thank you A little